welcome to one hour of miniature goodness. Awesome to see everybody in chat. Uh, first of all, I want to give a huge uh, shout out to Michelle. Um, unfortunately, she is uh, can't be with us tonight because of personal reasons. So loads of hugs uh, and love to Michelle. Um, let me say hello to everybody in chat first. We've got uh, Scorpler, we've got Philippe, uh, Carlos, Ravencroft. Nice to see you, Ravencroft. And nice that you can pop in and see us. The old GM, uh, Nafe's in the house. Muses Touch, hello, Muses Touch. i got something special for Muses Touch tonight. We've got naked ladies. <laughs> uh, Gareth's in the house. Um, <laughs> so let's make a start, shall we? Um, just... Uh... <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Making me laugh already. I haven't even started. There we go. See, just just for music's touch. Let me get some. Let me get some focus and some zoom. <laughs> now, what I'm going to show you today is how to paint bronze, nice and simple, on your statues. So we've got this one here, which is very very nice, uh, very nicely sculpted in all the right places. Um, can't complain of that one. Um, and the same, we've got the Spartan and the Amazon. Very nicely sculpted. Absolutely beautiful. And they both come with their little pedestals to stand on. We've also got the Well of Despair to paint today. Uh, this is a very simple little paint. <laughs> Naked guys as well! Look! This is this is a this is a mini of Carlos, because Carlos is all muscly and strong. Look, Carlos. Ah! <laughs> oh, okay, we've also got the uh, the gazebo. Hello, Rod. How you doing? Uh, we've got the gazebo. I'm stuck this together because it makes it easier to paint if you got it on the sprue still. So what we're going to do first is we'll put some dragon black. And all the parts we need the black on and then we can move on to the next stage now i've got quite a few miniatures today so i'm hoping that the paint will dry in time so i can go back and forth with each miniature now i'm also going to show you my water texture effects and that's a very simple place we'll be plonking that into our well of despair also i'll be showing you how to i don't know what the correct word is for bronze you know when bronze you get that uh, color well i'm going to show you how to make the um it's like a um, turquoise type of rust, rust effect that you get with bronze. So we're going to try and uh, get that done today as well. So let's get some paint on the palette and get cracking, shall we? Let me get my focus back in for you guys. Boom, boom. Oxen oxidation of copper. That's it. It's the same type of thing, isn't it, with bronze? I think it's all the same thing. So. We'll get some black on there. And now for the bronze, believe it, I'm going to use the brass colour from Vileco um, because it's a very rich, it's a very rich goldy brass colour and um, it just works really well. But um, we'll give that a mix, but we'll get that black on first. Now we'll just use a great big monster brush to get on our first coats. And this is normally with grey, I'd put the grey on, I'd use a black. A black wash and then do some highlighting but say we're going to go straight to black and what we'll do is we'll just dry brush the gray over the black and we we'll use the black as our shading on our for the dark areas and um, it'll make it a lot faster And what I'm going to also do, if I've got time, is if you can see... Oh, let me get focus again. Excuse for my nastiness here, not showing you what I'm doing. There we are. It's all good and well having autofocus, but with small miniatures, if you've got the autofocus on, it'll autofocus on all the wrong parts of the miniature, or it will focus on what's behind the miniature. Um, now, just here, we've got a little skull in the middle. Now it's got its mouth open, so water would be coming out of there. So I'm going to show you how I will make a little fountain coming out of the mouth if we get enough time in this hour. So I'll try and speed along as fast as possible. And um, we'll just get this main coat on. And I'm not putting any uh, 
primer coat really, the black is doing the job very nicely here because all we're going to do is dry brush over the black and that will give us our nice stone effect uh, just by using some greys. Congratulations to Philip, uh, Philippe, sorry, um, for getting his Twitch affiliate. Uh, very, very proud of you. And it didn't take you long at all, was it? Two weeks tops. That was very, very good. Very good. Very fast. I mean, all the goblins support each other, um, so it's very, very nice to have all the support of all the goblins. Um, I try my best to um, support as many people as I can, but um, you obviously, most of you know how busy I am anyway, so I'm, I'm finding it very difficult to be on uh, Discord um, a lot lately. Uh, you've probably noticed I've backed off a little bit. Um, I'm trying to get my work done and catch up. Um, so you'll have to excuse me. It's, I find it very, very difficult to do all the social media aspects as well as all the miniature painting. Um, Now, I don't know if uh, Tule is uh, streaming after me tonight. Um, I've been trying to catch her, um, but she seems to be starting the streams later and later. So when I've finished, she's still not on stream. Um, but if she is tonight, we shall try to give her a raid. Um, but it's not easy to catch Tule. <laughs> she kind of starts the stream at any time after nine o'clock. Okay, so we're just getting some black on. Um, I'll leave the front because I am holding that. So I'll just get some black inside. Just quick black. There's lots of ways you can paint stonework. Uh, painting black first is a great way to get a very dark effect when you want um, some nice effects on your uh, stonework. Now we can do the same with the pedestals that our statues go on. They're going to be stone as well. So we'll just give them a little black covering. Okay, very simple, straight to the top. Again, we'll come back to the bottom part once it's dry. So we just quickly get that black on. Boom, that one's done. And same with this one. And this is all the main areas done and then we can just dry brush once that's dry we can dry brush our greys and make a lovely looking stone effect now the bottom of the uh, gazebo um, we'll paint black as well because that's another stone effect so we'll just go around here
using a nice large brush uh, gets the job done fast uh, but remember not to overload your paintbrush because you are uh, you, don't, you want to try and keep the paintwork as neat as possible um, and as smooth as possible like so um, you don't want blobs of paint from your paintbrush you don't want any paint running you're trying to keep a nice smooth finish across the whole surface of all your miniatures um, uh, so having a big paintbrush does not mean um, <laughs> putting a ton of paint on your brush at one time okay so that's disappeared over there so that's the bottom of the gazebo now inside the gazebo um, we're going to paint that black as well uh, because this is going to be all in the shade it's all going to be under cover and the reason I'm doing this now is because it'll be impossible to paint if I stuck this together um, it's quite a small miniature um, so it's easier to actually get all the parts done while it's in pieces and then we can glue it together afterwards now this is a very simple little thing to do it's an elven gazebo so what we're going to be get going for is some nice dark greens and then we'll just add some browns to all those little branches and twigs going around the miniature um, and that would be a simple case of just very lightly dry brushing brown on top of our green um, and that should bring out all those little branches that you can see dotted around see the little branches everywhere all going around the top of the gazebo what we're going to do is some dark green all over there and then all we do is do a nice little brown dry brush over the whole thing and that'll pick out each one of those little twigs there okay so we've got some paint in there I'm not going to do anything to that all I, I'm going to leave that as it is because once it's glued together we're not even going to see inside that's all you're going to see from the outside you're not actually going to see underneath and if you did it'll be black so it's not a problem okay let's go back to our well and see if we can get the rest of the black on there we are lovely jubbly hello Ty okay so that one's done there how about this one let's get this one finished having a nice smooth uh, undercoat is uh, very important because it will affect the rest of your miniature um, so I can't stress enough um, you don't want big blobs of paint all over your miniatures uh, we just add in a, a layer just a light layer going across all the parts we want to have in stone and it's all even there's no there's no running of paint and that's that okay so we're done there so now we can uh, wash our brush and we'll move on to the brass and get the brass painted up so what we're doing is little sections of each one we've got all our little bits of black ready for dry brushing and that'll be all our stonework done um, then we'll have all these parts in dark green for the gazebo we shall do these now in the brass or um, it's supposed to be bronze but I'm using brass brass is perfect for what we need so let's get the warthog going We just put a little bit on our palette. And again, I'm just going to use the same brush because we just want a fine layer. Now, I haven't put any undercoating on these miniatures, uh, with the Bones miniatures. Um, they are known to 
you're supposed to be able to paint them directly from the packet. Um, I would recommend uh, putting black or white um, for an undercoat, but um, we're just doing this today, but nice and quickly. He's got a he's got a bronze bum look. <laughs> Now we're covering the whole miniature in bronze because um, it's supposed to be a statue of a bronze um, gladiator. Now we might have to do two coats. Um, we'll see how the paint dries. But as you can see, I'm just putting an, e an even coat all over the miniature. And I'm just using the large brush just to get the paint on, making sure I go into all the little crevices. Now what I'm going to be using, once this is all dry and I've got the right uh, consistency on, what we'll do is we'll be adding a light brown ink wash. Now Army Painter do a light brown ink wash, oh, this is the one here. This is the soft tone from Army Painter. Now, for bronze um, and gold, it is absolutely beautiful. It just gives an absolute gorgeous effect um, to the actual um, colour of the gold and the bronze. It works really, really nice. Thank you for subscribing. I sounded very Welsh there, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> now <laughs> I lived in I lived in Wales. I lived in Wales. I lived in Wales for 20 years. I lived in <laughs> I lived in Wales for 20 years. Um so I got a little bit of a Welsh comes out in in my accent now and again. I was from the valleys. <laughs> Okay, now at the minute I'm getting more paint over my fingies than anywhere else, but um, I am actually getting on quite nicely with this. This is looking great already. Um, the sculpt is absolutely gorgeous on this, these uh, miniatures. Um, now the sculptor has left my um, my head at the minute. Van Van there. Come on, Reaper fans! What's the name of the name of the sculptor I'm thinking of? Begin, begins with Van, Van there. You all know. Come on. Anybody know the sculptor's names? Of course you know, I'm, 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 I'm waiting for you, Muses Touch, to tell me. It begins with Van, Van, and I can't, I, I've forgotten the end of his name. <laughs> oh, so embarrassing. You know how much I love my sculptures too. Flobolob. Oh, by the way, Everybody, uh, welcome, welcome my father. See, see Ron, Ron M, four three two. That's my daddy. That's my daddy there, right there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dad, for popping in. Um, I, I look for, looking forward to seeing you on Friday. Totally embarrassed my dad now. He's gone gone in hiding. <laughs> I, <laughs> my dad's probably call, calling me all the names under the sun now. <laughs>
Goblin King's dad. That's awesome, man. I absolutely, absolutely love it. Um, my my dad and myself, we have um, we have such a, an amazing relationship. Um, that my dad is like my best friend, you know, uh, and um, I can tell him anything. Um, it's not. Uh, it's quite hard to um, have a relationship that good with your father. Um, when I was a young man, I was a bit of a tear away. Um, so my 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 dad and my dad and me didn't get on too well most of the time. But uh, we're actually all good now, and uh, we go on muffin runs. Uh, that's getting cake, by the way. <laughs> Nothing else. Um, so. There he is, he's talking about muffins now, look. <laughs> you can, so everybody, you can blame my dad for my cookie habit. Cookies. <laughs> okay, I apologize for the uh, slowness of today's paint. I shall speed up in a minute. But uh, the joy of today is um, by the time I've got this gold on, we'll be able to go straight into the dry brushing of the um, other parts going back onto the stonework and then we can go back to this and this will be dry now if anybody paints the old um, games workshop miniatures um, now I most of you'll be going oh my goodness Mike's mentioned games workshop um, the reason I'm mentioning games workshop is because of the old um, age of Sigma miniatures um, I know they have a lot of gold um, this is a this is what I'm showing you today is a nice way to actually paint those miniatures if you're into that type of thing. Um, painting uh, brass uh, instead of actual gold paint works so much better than using gold paint. I know it sounds crazy um, to use brass um, instead of gold, but as you can see, the color the color is more richer. And I think with brass, you get an actual more gold type of effect to what you're painting. Um, especially when you see the effect when I add the brown ink wash in a minute. Um, so if you're doing the old Age of Sigma, I can't, I don't, I can't remember the name of those miniatures from that game. Um, the gold, the gold minis. But uh, this would work very well for those ones. Okay, okay, why, while I am washing my brush, now if you want to all type in, uh, give me a free mini, um, everybody who is on a painting tier will be added to the Wheel of Pain, and Claire will um, add your name to the list for today, and we shall give you the winner in Discord later on. Ravencroft, give me a free mini! <laughs> give me a free mini, now! <laughs> Hello, Renegade Shank. Um, Claire, don't forget to add Michelle to the um, draw today as well. Uh, because, um, uh, well, just out of respect of, for Michelle, to be honest. Okay, so we shall now move into our greens. And what we'll do is we'll add some greens to the top of the gazebo and all the little pillars for the gazebo. Let's get to the Warthog. Give me a free mini! Give me a free mini! <laughs> okay, again, I'm still using the same brush. And what we're going to do is go straight to the top of the old gazebo here. 
So we're going to get that green on. It's a beautiful green. It's a lovely dark green. It's a real nice woodland, deep, rich green. Absolutely gorgeous. Now green, as you probably guessed, is my favorite color. Um, so I do have a passion for green things. Um, black is my second favorite, although black isn't actually a, a, um, a color. It's a neutral thing, um, but for colors green. So we're just zooming on the paint. Those and those of paint. <laughs> and it's strange. Um, I'm I'm 50 this year. I'm 50. I'm 50 years old this year, but I still feel like a little kid when my dad. Um, when my dad pops on or kind of does things that makes me feel like he's proud of me <laughs> it's uh, you never you never you never feel um i don't know this is is a is a hard thing to explain for me but uh, i've always tried to uh, live up to my dad who was always like my hero as a as a young man you know uh, and even even at 50 i'm still trying <laughs> Oh, and there he is again, look. <laughs> oh, I better not I better not say too much about my dad or he'll be on every every single show and he'll be like <laughs> I'd be more than welcome. I'd love to see him on every show. Uh, it's been very difficult for all of us the last few years not seeing our families um i've i've seen my family um i think three times in the last two years um so it's we've, we've just started to start seeing each other again um and even then it's just for a few hours so we do respect the uh regulations of the covid virus and all the rest of it um, but it's been a very tough year for all of us. So trying to get back to normal is sometimes just as hard. Okay, so these are little pillars there. We just got those quickly painted up. Okay, let's get into some fun stuff. Let's get some dry brushing done. <laughs> okay dry brush in what we're going for the dry brush in is we need a nice oh i'm whacking my camera with my head one nice piece of kitchen towel uh, you all know what I'm like with the dry brushing. I love my dry brushing. Uh, we got some Arctic Grey. We we'll get that on, give that a buzz on the old warthog. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Now, for the dry brushing, I am just using a huge brush. This is just an ordinary army painter um, terrain vehicle brush. It's not an actual brush made for dry brushing, but it works perfect for what I need to do. Now, I'm going into the tissue, taking off the paint, and we're gonna just fly through this miniature here and get some, you know, pick up all the details instantly. It's a very, easy thing to do to make instant amazing looking old stones especially when using black now if you use black and gray what you'll find is you've got a more gothic feel you'll get a real good gothic feel to that miniature now what we 
do with the greys is we concentrate more heavily around the edges. So the edge of the well here will make it a little bit lighter. And everybody will know what's coming up next. We'll have that lovely green effect going around the bottom of the base. <laughs> now I'm just going to add some to the bottom there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fill this up later with some of that beautiful water texture. But we just want to get a little bit of colour on there. Now we're not going to go too much into detail with the dry brushing because I just want it as a nice gothic feel. This will fit into all my dungeons. And it, so all my dungeons are roughly painted the same way. You've got some black, some greys, and we just work our way around. Now I'm adding a little bit more grey. Now we might go a bit lighter at the top, a little bit lighter at the top, top of the hood. Give that a bit more of an oomph. And just there. And just the top of there. Feet. And a little bit more around the top of the well, just to give it a little bit of an edge. And on the sharpest corners, just keep it going down. I'll pick out each of the corners there. Easy peasy. And again, on all the sharpest edges, just getting that brush across and you're leaving a nice, nice brighter line going around. Lovely. And well, that's simple enough. Very, very simple. I'm just going to add a bit more there. There we go. No. Okay, let's get the other stones done. Back into the grey, taking off the paint. Again, we've got some lovely sharp edges on here. What we'll do is start on the top. Boom, 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 boom. Get some grey on there. And then we'll just work our way along. Not so hard on the inside stone. So we're just working our way around. But what we want to do is make it heavier pulling down from the top. So we've got um, a nice sharp edge going around and it's leaving a very nice grey mark going on the edges. And the same on the sides, just on all the edges. And this will just pick out all the edges of all the miniature. And the black will do all the shades and highlights you need. Super, super simple. And we're done. Bum, bum. And again, next one. Let's take off, take off the grey paint. Again, starting at the top. Bum, 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 bum. Going around. Yeah. I'm just moving around. As you can see, I do get a lot of paint on my hands, um, but I like getting dirty. I like getting dirty. Again, we're going to work around the edge now, make it a little bit brighter at the top, just so it shows up better. And we've got some sharp edges at the bottom, so we'll just keep pulling down on the brush we're pulling this way, going down with the brush, and that way you're leaving the highlight on the top of those stonework. Just going around and keep them pulling down. We're not going back up with the brush, we're just going down. So we're pulling that paint down onto the top, leaving a nice, so as you can see on the edges, it just makes it look very worn. And that's that one done. Okay, for the gazebo floor. Now this one is a little bit different, we've got to start from the middle and work our way out. Now the reason we do that is because we're trying to leave that black in all the recesses. So what we're trying to do here is make sure we get all that pattern. So what we'll do is very gently see how it works out and then we can start going heavier and heavier. And what will happen is the grey will start taking over but the black will stay in those recesses and you'll just get a nice stone looking floor. So this way you're just controlling the amount of paint being put onto your floor. I'm going to leave the center quite black and then we just work our way around. That way we've got all, all the pattern has come up beautifully 
and we've had minimal effort getting to that effect. And on the edges of course we're going down again because we're trying to get a nice edge. So very simple and fast. Boom 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 and we're done. Just do a little bit more and the black is working as a shade in all the little recesses and that's our bottom of the gazebo all ready for our next step okay so all our stonework is about done already we'll give our brush a wash <laughs> uh, I was, I, I was actually thinking the same thing. Michelle's Michelle's Mr. Magical show tonight more than new to new new to tea. <laughs> okay. Right then, let me show you um let me have a look at these. That's fine. It's the it could do with another coating, but what I'm going to do is we're gonna go straight to the ink wash stage. These are dry now. Um, so what we got here is some soft tone ink wash. This is by Army Painter. We'll give that a good mix. Now, what I want to be able to show you today is how I do that um, oxidization. I think someone said. I think it's Carlos. It's not correct word. Oxidization. I can't say it. But... So we've got a little bit of that on the palette there. Um, let's just, and again, just use the same brush. I'm using the same brush for the whole show. <laughs> Who needs double O? Who needs a zero? <laughs> okay. So, straight on. Lots and lots of ink wash. And we'll just move that across the whole of the mini. And what we'll do is we'll get our little magical cotton buds in a minute. And we move anything that we don't want. Now this ink wash from Army Painter, it's magical for gold. Absolutely magical. Now you can use the darker browns, but what you'll find is you're not you don't get that really rich, shiny, glowy, goldy effect. <laughs> but uh, this just is a beautiful thing to use. It just goes into all the recesses. Um, it's not too strong. If you use, um, if you just used brown, uh, the brown ink wash, um, it, that, it's, ve it's a very strong ink wash compared to this light. Um, so what will happen? It gets too. It, instead of it, instead of it becoming a nice rustic-looking gold, if you use a heavy brown ink wash, it just becomes a dirty. It becomes a dirty brown, um, a dirty goldy color. Um, but by using the, the light ink wash, it still goes into all the recesses, but you're getting a much more rich, rustic maybe is the word, beautiful flavors then. <laughs> beautiful flavors. You could eat it. You could eat it. <laughs> Take that down there. Now, get my little cotton buds. You all know what these are. These are what I stick in my ears because I'm an old man. I stick them in my ears. And um, what we'll just do is we'll remove a tiny bit of the excess ink, especially on the horn. That's a little bit, take away a little bit there, a little bit there. It's just to take away the excess so it doesn't pull. Um, that's one thing that does look horrible is if you leave your miniature run, um, you'll get a pooling of ink washes in certain parts of the miniature which can actually make it look absolutely awful. So what we do is we just use our little um, cotton bud here just to remove excess. So what we can do now is we leave this one. There, as you can see, it's looking absolutely fab. I mean, all that is is our bronze uh, with the old ink wash on and it, it just looks great. Okay, let's get the man done. Now this shield should rock. It will look absolutely beautiful with this um, ink wash on. It'll just pick out all the snakes. We've got Medusa in the middle. I don't know if you can see that properly. But we've got um, a picture of Medusa in the middle of the old uh, 
because it's a Spartan miniature, isn't it? So we've got Medusa in the middle there. I don't know if you can see that very well. It looks, it looks absolutely fabulous. It's a beautiful sculpt. And we'll just move our way around. Get some paint on his buttocks. On his buttocks. <laughs> you got some paint on your buttocks, mate. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> okay, so very fast and simple to do. Now we have to try and get these to dry so I can show you how I do the oxonize oh, I can't say it now. Oxonize oxonize la 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 to get that rusty effect looking. Oxon oxidization, I think the word was again. Oxidation, uh, ox, oxidation, oxidation. Is that correct? Oxidation. Thank you, Carlos. It's so nice to have um, goblins um, that actually know what I'm talking about. They understand the gibberish I talk, and then they translate. They actually, what they do is they translate my goblin language into proper English. So I thank you for that. <laughs> Okay, let's take some of this paint off. Okay, it's just we're just watching for the pooling now, and hopefully this will dry in time. Okay. Okay. Now, we're going back into the green, and we're going to start doing our pillars. Um, as you can see, our little... They're all looking absolutely beautiful now. Well, we'll keep an eye on them, though, to make sure that um, ink wash doesn't keep running. <laughs> I knew, I knew, I knew this stream would be bad. I knew it would be bad today. <laughs> I think, I think Muse's touch will be making Michelle very, very proud today. <laughs> See, you're making me drop my miniatures. <laughs> Oh my god, stop it all of you. <laughs> okay, then we carry on. Let's see what time it is. Oh my goodness me. Wow, it's been a fast show today. Very fast show. Okay, let me see if I can get a little bit more done. Um, I wanted to show you that... Um, uh, that's that's going to be a while yet. Uh -uh. An hour stream um, seems like a very long time, uh, but when you're waiting for things to dry, um, or not waiting for things to dry, when you're busy painting, um, it flies by, that's for sure. Um, and I, there's so much I want to show you, but I can't do much longer than an hour because um, I have animals to feed and take for walks, and um, it's, ve it's a very difficult thing for me to do all this and do my other work as well. Um, so an hour is about the ma maximum I can do. <laughs> yeah, that's my dad in chat. You know that, don't you? <laughs> yeah, he's worse than me. Yeah, he's worse than me. Honest to God. <laughs> Thank you, Bold GM. Um, and Mr. Bold GM, when are you going to start uh, doing some trip streams again? I, I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed watching you the other day when you did your uh, marathon stream. Uh, you should uh, try to do a little bit more. Uh, what I'm doing here, by the way, is with the green. Um, I always add a nice little bit of green around the bottom of any stonework I do. 
Um, it just gives a nice, really worn, old effect. I do it to all my miniatures, um, but it just adds a little bit of goodness. A little bit of goodness to all the mini. So we're just adding it right to the bottom. A little layer of green just going up the size. It just makes it look like it's been, it looks like it's been there for a long time by just adding that little bit of green around the bottom. Now, if you do that to all your houses and all your stone miniatures in your dungeons, it instantly ages. It instantly ages it. It makes it my age. <laughs> It makes it as old as I am. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm going to add a bit more green. Oh, boom, boom, boom. So, yeah, so we've got a lovely green going around. It's made it nice and worn, used. And the black behind it just really gives it a real dark gothic feel to the whole thing very simple to do and we'll do the same with our little pillars just send it to the bottom of the base very simple a little bit of green boom done and one more Yes, well, if you ever if you ever need a little hand, um, Bold GM, uh, just uh, give me a shout out. Um, um, uh, you could always do um, a show sometimes near me, and you know we can. I could give you a little raid now and again. Uh, no problems with that. I always like to support the goblins. Okay, so we've got some green on there. Is my dad talking about his IBS? <laughs> my my father and I are so similar. It is it it it's it's scary. It it is it gets to a scary stage where when your dad is you know you were both very very similar. Um, <laughs> okay, let's let's see if I can get this last bit on. I want I want to try and show you the oxidization. Oh, I don't. Am I? Have I been saying that correctly through the stream? Oxide. I can't. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And I apologise for my terrible English. Um. Okay. What we need is um a little bowl. This is it here. This is my little blister pack. Now. It's a super, super easy thing. And what I've found works the best for me is Spectral Glow by MSP Paints. So we'll give that a blitz. Just say Verdigris. I can't even say that, for God's sake. <laughs> Verdigris sounds like something when you die. <laughs> That's rigor mortis. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I knew it was familiar. Okay. Um, let me try. This is, I'm trying to be serious now. I'm trying to show you all these fantastic things to learn how to paint. Okay, so give this a little squirt in it if I need my pokey stick. I give this a squiggle around. Sometimes there's a little ball inside that decides it doesn't want to let the paint out. There we go. So we just need a little bit. Now, what we do here is we make it into a wash. And that is the key. We just make it into a wash. Um, so what we do here is... I've got some water. I'm going to use my brush here. And what we're going to do is just add some water. Just a couple of little brushes full. There we go. And we'll give that a good old mix in. 
So we've got a nice, very watery consistency. You don't want to know what a pokey stick is, Dad. <laughs> okay. So we've got a nice little consistency. What you can do as well, just to check out your consistency, um, is don't put it onto the miniature straight away. Just um, get a little bit on your brush and just put it onto your palette over there. And as you can see, it's going on quite nicely. Um, but what we need to do now, um, it might be a bit runny because it might not be dry fully. Um, now this is the key, is we want some more of our more of our little sticks ready and what we do is still a bit wet so this could be a complete fail because my miniature is still a little bit wet um, so what we'll try and do is just add it to the face and see how we get on right now what we do is we take the paint away And you're left with that beautiful kind of that color that you get from the metal uh, oxidization whatever process Carlos has been talking about all show. <laughs> let me get some let me get some more focus one second let's get some closely closely focus there you go <laughs> okay so we'll carry on a little bit more i'm just adding some more of this beautiful color we just let it run around the whole miniature and we take away the excess with our little ear plugs and as you can see we've got that beautiful effect that happens to the metal god sake take it out of your mouth um what happens to the metal when it gets old and worn there we are what do you think that works quite well doesn't it yeah that works quite well now i am having an issue because it is it is mixing in with my ink wash um it would be a little bit a little tad brighter but it's mixing in with the brown but i just wanted to show you that before i finish the show um and you can do that over the whole mini and it does look absolutely fantastic <laughs> thanks dad <laughs> clever sword <laughs> so there we are let's have a look at the time yes it's time for me to say good night um i do hope you all enjoyed this show um i've did quite a lot came on today with the textured water um all that all we need to do with the textured water is we just add that into the bowl there um, but what i'll do is when i do <laughs> when i do my youtube um uh, my youtube video upload i will put 360s of all the miniatures so you can see all the finished work so there we are thank you all so much for popping in to see me i had a lovely time um and i shall see you what day are we on i shall see you on thursday where we'll be back painting our whiskers miniatures so until then i will see you on discord and i shall say good night to every single one of you love to you all and good night